Okay, so here are some more parallel line proofs with um, lots of emphasis on the thought process. Okay, how you attack a problem from the given information and what you're asked to prove. Okay, and how you can build that proof through these kind of things. Okay, so start with the end in mind. What are you asked to prove? And then find relationships that will help you get to that point. Okay. So here are the three proofs from the assignment the other day. Number one said, given that we have two sets of parallel lines, prove that angle two, which is right here, plus angle 12, which is right here, prove that these two things add up to 180. Okay, that is what we are going to show is that these two things add up to 180. Okay, so here's your thought process. Okay, we want to show that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 12 equals 180. Okay, we're trying to show this supplementary relationship exists between angles 2 and 12. So to start, we need to find a true, okay, an already true relationship, a true supplementary relationship, okay, because we want them to add up to 180. So start with a true supplementary relationship involving either angle 8, sorry, involving either angle 2 or angle 12. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We want to show that angle 2 and angle 12 add up to 180. So let's say the first step, well after the given of course, write down a true statement with angle 2 plus angle something else or angle something else plus angle 12 equals 180. Okay? So that's where we start. And then let's say, um, for example, that maybe angle 2 plus, oh, I don't know which other angle might add up to 180 with angle 2. 3, you want this one? Okay? There are three angles here that will do the trick. Okay, let's do them in yellow so you can see. Actually, I'll highlight them. Okay, angle two plus angle one. These ones add up to 180 because they are a linear pair. Okay, angle two and angle three add up to 180. They are also a linear pair. Angle two and angle five add up to 180 because they are consecutive interior angles. Okay, so if we want to write down a true supplementary relationship, it's either angle 2 and angle 3, angle 2 and angle 1, or angle 2 and angle 5. So whichever one you want to do, that is fine. There are two different reasons though. So you can do these two because they're a definition of a linear pair. 2 and 3 would also involve the definition of a linear pair. 2 and 5 would be the consecutive interior angles theorem. So whichever one you pick, there is a reason why you must be able to pick it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do um, five. Okay, so that's in yellow, let me change it back. So angle two plus angle five equals 180. So just pick any one of them, or angles 12 and angle 10, or angle 12 and angle 11, or angle 12 and angle seven. Okay, these two would be linear pair, these two would be linear pair, 12 and 7 would be consecutive exterior angles. So depending on the pair that you pick, there is a reason, a geometric reason why they add up to 180. Okay, so since we involved angle 2, what we want to do now is build a relationship, 
a congruent relationship Okay, build a congruent relationship between which two angles? Between angles, well, our two, two is what we want. So two is good, check, we got number two. We want to build a relationship between 12 and five. Okay, we want to show that angle two plus angle 12 equals 180. That's what we want, correct? Right now, we have 2 plus 5. So we need to relate angle 5 to angle 12. Okay, we need to find a 5-12 relationship so that we can substitute angle 5 with angle 12. Okay, so you want to build a congruent relationship between angle 5 and angle 12. Okay, if you can do that, then you can replace angle 5 with angle 12 and you've done what you want, you've proved it. Okay, so does angle 5 and angle 12 have an angle in common that they are both congruent to? They are both congruent to angle 8. Okay, so yes, we can build this congruent relationship. 5 is the same as 8, 8 is the same as 12, so 5 is the same as 12 by the transitive property. Okay? That's the kind of thing that you're wanting to do here. Start off with a true relationship, okay? a true statement that is similar to your prove, okay? with involving one of these two things. Okay? I, I told the other class, if you want to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you better start with some peanut butter. Okay, and then, of course, you can pick whatever kind of jelly you want to, but you need to start with peanut butter. Okay? Well, you can have it on a hoagie or it's all kinds of bread, so don't, just, don't get, just don't get crazy about your options of making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But you've got to start with something that you're wanting to end with. Okay? So start with either angle 2 or angle 12. Okay? So this is the thought process. Once you have this relationship, you will substitute and you will be done. We are going to do the formal proof in 14 seconds. Okay? So, here we go. Let's do the formal proof of this thought process that we just went through here yesterday. Sorry, not yesterday, 10 seconds ago. So we start off with a true relationship and we will build the congruent angles and then we'll substitute. So, step number one, A is parallel to B, C is parallel to D, given. Okay, step number two, what was that supplementary relationship? Two plus angle five equals 180. Okay, because two and five are consecutive interiors. Okay, so the consecutive interior angle theorem. Okay, for short, the CIA theorem. Consecutive interior angles. Okay, because these lines are parallel, those angles are supplementary. Okay, they add up to 180. So, once again, number three. We want to start building the relationship between angle 5 and angle 12. Okay, our angle 2, that's fantastic. That's part of our proof. Our 180 is part of our proof. We need to change our angle 5. So, angle 5 is congruent to which other angle? In this case, angle 8. Because remember, this is going to be your go-between. What kind of angles are these? These are vertical angles, so they are congruent by the vertical angles theorem, which says vertical angles are congruent. In addition, angle 8 is also congruent to what other angle? Angle 12. And what kind of angles are these? These are corresponding angles, so they are congruent by the corresponding angle postulate. 
Remember, this line is also given as parallel to that line. So 8 and 12 correspond, 11 and 7 correspond, 9 and 5, and so on and so forth. Okay. So 5 is the same as 8. 8 is also the same as 12. Therefore, the next logical step is angle 5 is congruence to angle 12. Okay, you should be able to recognize these three steps pretty readily at this point in recognizing that this is which property? The transitive property. Okay, these three purple things here have built the relationship between the two angles that you need. Okay, this is where we build the relationship, the congruence. 5 is to 8, 8 is to 12, therefore 5 is to 12. Okay. Now, because we want to substitute, we need to change congruence into equality. So we should be recognizing this step also, changing from angles being congruent to their measures being equal, is done by which definition? The definition of congruence, which says that if angles are congruent, their measures are equal. So now I have built the relationship between 5 and 12, that they are in fact equal. So I can come back up here to my second step and do some replacing. Okay, so rather than angle 5, I now have angle 12. Okay. I am able to do this replacing because these things are equal and that is using the substitution property. Okay, And we have done exactly what we have set out to do. So this is the thought process. You start off with something similar to what you're asked to show. Okay, either involving one of these two angles. Okay, adding up to 180. So we could have gone from 2 to 3. Okay, that would have been the definition of a linear pair. And then does 3 relate to 8? Well, sure, these are corresponding angles. So you could have had 3 is equal to 8, 8 is still equal to 12, and then you still have your transitive. Yes, Caitlin? Um, to, to which one? So with the end in mind, that is how you will build this relationship. Okay. There was also the, uh, the alternate exterior ones between 5 and 12, so we could have gone directly from here using the alternate exterior angle theorem, but that wouldn't have been as fun. Okay, so let's do the same thing with this one. Okay, in this proof, we're given some parallel lines and congruent angles. So we know that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And that this line is parallel to this line. Okay, so we're asked to prove that two lines are parallel. So, here's our thought process. In order to prove that lines are parallel, we must show one of two things. Either we have congruent angles. Okay, like congruent corresponding angles, congruent alternate interior angles, or congruent alternate exterior angles. Okay, because using the converse of these theorems, if you have congruent angles, then you have parallel lines. So you either have to show congruent angles, or you have to show some supplementary ones, like uh, the consecutive interiors or consecutive exteriors. That says CI for consecutive interior. Okay, 
So you have to show that these things are true before you can have a set of parallel lines. Okay, because we want to prove that this line is parallel to that line. So we need to find relationships between these angles down here. Okay? So which ones might be the easiest to show are being congruent? And there's a couple different ways to do this as well. So we know that angle 3 and angle 11 are congruent. So which angle are both 3 and 7, or rather 3 and 11, congruent? 7. So they kind of blurted it out there. To which angle or angles are both 3 and 11 congruent? Okay, so once again, we are building this relationship. We know 3 and 11, but we would really like to have something down here between these eight angles. Okay, because these eight angles are involved with line C and line D. Okay, so we need to have these eight angles be either congruent or supplementary. So notice angle 3 up here and angle 11 down here are both related to angle 7 here. Okay? If we could show that 7 was the same as 11, then these would be corresponding angles that are congruent and you would have parallel lines. Okay? To what other angle are both 3 and 11 potentially congruent? Angle 6. So if we could show that angle 6 and 11 were also be congruent, then these are alternate interior angles and these lines would be parallel also. Okay, so there is usually more than one relationship between these angles, or rather more than one angle that share that same relationship. So there is more than one way to do the proof depending on which angles you pick. Okay, depending on what angles you pick, you need to have that angle reason correct. So either corresponding angles if you go 7 and 11, or alternate interior angles if you go 6 and 11. All right? So either way, they both work out just fine. And they work out like this. So step number one, A is parallel to B. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 11. Given. Okay, also you can write A is parallel to B given 3 and 11 given. You can do them all in different lines if you want to. It doesn't matter that much which way you do it. Whichever way your teacher wants you to do it, you do it that way. Me, I don't care. So step number two. We know that 3 is the same as 11. And because A is parallel to B, which angles do you want to use? You want to go 3 and 6 or do you want to go 3 and 7? Let's do 3 and 6 just because we use the cap all the time. Let's say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. Okay, So we'll go this way. Angle 3 is the same as angle 6. Because what kind of angles are these? These are alternate <laughs> interior angles. So they're congruent by the alternate interior angle theorem. Okay, make sure you have theorem on the end here because the fact that there's alternate interior angles is a descriptor. The theorem says they're congruent. Okay, so let's see. What do we have? We have 3 is the same as 11. 3 is also the same as 6. Therefore, 6 must be the same as 11. Okay, this is our classic, very helpful transitive property. Well, they are alternate interior angles, which is why we're able to say, step number four, that C is now parallel to D. Because what kind of angles are these? These are alternate interior. interior. So by the alternate interior angle theorem converse, these lines are now parallel. Okay? 
6 is the same as 11 because of this. 3 to 11, 3 to 6, therefore 6 to 11. Okay? They just so happen to be alternate interior angles, which is fantastic because now we can use that converse to say that they are congruent. So with the end in mind, proving lines are parallel, you need to have congruent angles. Okay, so we have shown a specific pair of angles are congruent, therefore the lines are parallel. Okay, and of course at any time you can pause or rewind and try to do it on your own. Don't worry about that. Like this one. You might want to try this one on your own for a minute. Okay, just pause the video, um, try it and then restart the video and see how you did. Or of course, fast forward to the end, it will be there. Anywho, um, how to start. One and nine, this is what we wanna show that one is the same as nine. So like the other one, we need to start with a true supplemental relationship involving either angle one or angle nine. Okay, it doesn't matter which of the two you pick. Just make sure you pick some that you're able to support later. Okay, you might start the proof with one and two and then figure out that you can't build a relationship between two and nine, okay, which is fine. Just start with nine and then try to build a relationship the other way. Okay, it's okay to use your eraser when you're doing proofs. And by all means, there's been lots of erasures used as I've done proofs. Okay, so start with an, uh, uh, a, a true supplementary relationship involving one or nine. Like, um, which one shall we do? Well, we know or given that three is the same as eight, so does the, is there another relationship between 1 and 2 and 1 and 4? Um, right, these are both linear pairs, but can we go from 4 to anywhere else? Probably not. From 2 to anywhere else? Probably not. So let's start with angle 9. To which angle is 9 supplementary? Nine is supplementary to eight. So angle eight plus angle nine is equal to 180. Okay? We could have also done nine to 10. Those would also be supplementary. Maybe even nine to 12. Those are also supplementary. Okay? These are, of course, linear pairs, just like those ones are linear pairs. But eight and nine are what kind of angles? Consecutive interiors. Okay, so we're going to start with these being adding up to 180. Okay, so if we start this way, we need to build a relationship between which two angles? 8 and? 8 and 1. Okay, remember our proof is to show that 1 plus 9 is 180. We have 8 plus 9 right now, so we would really like to build a relationship between 8 and 1. Relationship. So very similar to the one we just did two, 10 minutes ago. Build a relationship between angle 8 and angle 1. Okay, do you think that's possible? Yes. Sure. Angle 8 relates to angle 3. Angle 3 relates to angle 1. Okay, so once again we have this nice transitive relationship between angle 1 and angle 8 involving angle 3. Okay, so once you have these ones congruent, you can use substitution, substitute angle 1, angle 1 for angle 8. Okay, so that's the thoughts. We wanted to build a relationship here, supplementary ones, 1 and 2 doesn't really work so hot, 1 and 4 doesn't work so hot, so using 1 to start with is not such a good idea, but 9 and 8 are fantastic because 8 can eventually relate to 1. Okay? 9 and 10, sure, because 10 relates to 8, 8 relates to 3, 3 relates to 1. It's just a little bit longer to go from 10 
to 1 as it would go from 8 to 1. Okay, so let's do this proof. Once again, if you want to pause the video and do it on your own, I highly suggest you try it. But here it is anyway. Number one, we're going to stack our givens on the first line. as being given. Okay, once again, it is okay to use this information later in your proof. You don't have to stack them both as the first line. Okay, step number two was to say that angle 8 plus angle 9 add up to 180. Okay, this is true because these lines are parallel. Okay, our other lines C and D are not parallel. So the measure of angle 8 plus the measure of angle 9 equals 180. Okay, We've already got two parts of our prove done in the second step. And these are corresponding interior angle theorem. Okay, The theorem says they're supplementary. The definition of supplementary is that they add up to 180. So maybe formally there might be another step in here. 8 and 9 are supplementary, thus 8 plus 9 equals 180. So step number three, now we build our relationship between angle eight and angle one. Okay, we need to build from angle eight to angle one because that's what we need to have in our peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So we know that angle eight is congruent to angle three up here. Okay, so we could have written that down here as our next logical step. So if 3 is congruent to 8, what else is 3 congruent to? Angle 3 is also congruent to angle 1. Because angle 3 and angle 1 are what kind of angles? Vertical, vertical angles. angles. So they are congruent by the vertical, vertical angle. angle theorem. So our next logical step after this, we have 3 is the same as 8. 3 is also the same as 1, therefore, angle 8 is congruent to angle 1. This is our fantastic transitive property. Okay, I'm glad that you are all recognizing the transitive property now. At least most of you are recognizing it. Okay, it involves three angles where two of them have the same number and then the other two must also relate. Okay. Because we want to use substitution, we need to change congruence into Equal. equality. Okay, in order to replace angle 8, you have to be replaced with equals. So they're congruent in step number 4 means they're going to be equal in step number 5. And that always uses the definition, definition of congruence. It always uses the definition of congruence. That's how we change from equals to congruence or from congruence to equals, depending on the need at the time. So step number six, going back up to step number two, we substitute the thing that we need, which is angle one. So measure of angle 8 can be replaced by measure of angle 1 because they are equal, and this is using substitution. And we are done. Okay. So starting with the end in mind, try to make sure that if you have some type of a relationship that you start with one of those two angles, if possible, in a similar type fashion. So if it's supplementary, start off with something that's supplementary. If it's congruence, start off with something that's congruent, okay, involving one of those two angles. And then try to build using a common angle to both of those and then do what you got to do. So hopefully this is helpful and you can watch it over and over and over again until you puke. I'm just kidding. Okay, bye.